John 6, 1 to 21. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for this people to eat? He asked this only to test him, and for he had already in mind what was going to what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will that go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who, who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water, and they were frightened. But he said to them, It is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. Good morning, friends in Christ. My name is Carmen Ramirez, and I am the assistant to the Bishop in Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Today we gather to reflect on the very powerful story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 as recorded in John 6, 1. 221. This passage not only demonstrates the miraculous power of Jesus, but also invites us to consider how we can respond to God's abundant grace in our lives and how we can impact the lives of others. In John 6, 121, we see a large crowd following Jesus because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. As the crowd grew, Hungry, Jesus asked Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Philip's response highlighted the enormity of the task, but Andrew brought a boy with five barley loaves and two small fish. Jesus took these humble offerings, gave thanks, and distributed them to the crowd. Miraculously, everyone had enough to eat, and there were 12 baskets left over some lessons in faith and generosity. This miracle teaches us several important lessons. Firstly, it shows us that Jesus cares about our physical needs as well as our spiritual ones. He is the provider who can turn our scarcity into abundance. Secondly, it teaches us the value of faith and generosity. The boy's willingness to share his small lunch was used by Jesus to bless thousands in our lives. No act of kindness or generosity is too small for God to use in miraculous ways. Someone, someplace is waiting for even a tiny gesture that will make their day or even change their lives. I remember many years ago when I was first attending a local church, I had had a very bad night and I almost did not go to church that day because my night had been so terrible. I felt depressed and I felt ugly and I felt just really down. 
As I walked into the church, I remember the assistant pastor was at the entrance and he said to me, you look so nice today. His words changed my state of being. I felt that God himself had said those kind words to me. And it was as if God had said, do not worry, you are going to be okay. You will be just fine. As we continue to reflect on this story, we are reminded of our call to respond to God's grace with faith and action. Just as Jesus multiplied the loaves and the fishes, he can multiply our efforts to bring about his kingdom on earth. We are invited to trust in his provision and to share our blessings with others, knowing that God can do immeasurable more than we can ask or more than we can imagine. A small gesture or a kind word goes a long way for those who need it at that precise moment. It can transform a person's day or maybe even their life. As we also think about the World Day Against Trafficking in Persons, today we acknowledge the word World Day Against Trafficking in Persons, which is July 30th. As we reflect on Jesus' compassion and provision, let us remember those who are suffering from exploitation and trafficking. We are called to be instruments in God's justice and love, working to end human trafficking and to support the survivors on their journey towards healing and restoration. Conclusion. Uh, let's be inspired by the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 to live lives of faith, generosity, and action. Let us trust in God's abundance, provision, and willing to share what we have, knowing that he can use our gifts to bless others in ways we cannot even imagine. And let us commit to standing against injustice, remembering that we are called to be hands and feet of Christ in the world. Amen. Thank you.